Hey everyone, RJ here with CV Tech, and today I'm giving my review on the Cell Allure Miracle 6.0 S. Uh, is this a phone that you should pick up, or is it a phone that you should pass on? Uh, let's go ahead and find out right now in this review. Okay, y'all, so we're going to take a look around the phone here, run some tests, play some games, and all that stuff. Uh, take you on the phone just showing you all about it in this review um, so first of all I want to say that if 4G LTE is important to you and that's like a main priority this phone is not for you this phone only supports 4G or HSPA plus or this, this phone does not have LTE capabilities unfortunately so right there is already you know a downfall for this device now it does come with this really nice um, back cover and it, you can look at the edges here it's very well protected as you can see around the corners here so a very nice case kind of rubberized and feels pretty good so right now I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this and get this off the phone to kind of just show you just show you the phone and the phone looks really nice it's got a really nice texture back here to force your rear camera and your flash your single rear speaker on the back uh, your power and volume rockers are not textured nothing like that so they're pretty smooth on the left side here we got nothing on top is your micro USB charging port and headset jack on the bottom is just your microphone on the front here of course is your receiver camera and of course here is your bottom buttons here with a physical home button so we'll go ahead here and take a look at the phone now for a 720p display on a six inch device this display looks really nice it looks really good very clean very clear and honestly the screen just looks pretty sharp i mean it looks really good now we're going to go over here right now and look at cpuz we're going to see what we're dealing with here with the specs now this phone runs the 1.3 gigahertz mediatek mt6580 has a molly 400 mp gpu it's got a uh it says five inch display but it's got a six inch display at 720 by 1280 uh, it only does have one gigabyte of ram so i was not really expecting that when i actually bought this phone but it only has one gigabyte of ram it's got 16 gigabytes of internal storage 11.1 currently on the phone but the good thing about this phone here is when i first unboxed it looked at the storage only 111 megabytes was used so that's pretty solid i kind of like that now look at the geekbench 4 test that i did run a little bit earlier and we'll kind of go over here and just look at the history of the test that i ran and the test ran pretty low at 385 single core score and 1082 multi-core score now, of course, scores don't mean everything. As we all know, scores can vary. Um, and But that right there is a pretty low score. We'll go home here, go into N22 benchmark. And it got a score of 24,840, which is also very low. And, you know, I'm not too familiar with MediaTek processors a whole lot. Um, but you know it is what it is 24,840 so we'll go back home here and honestly the phone does seem to run fairly smooth I mean honestly I've played some games with it and I've used it a little bit and the phone seems to just work it's not the worst phone I've ever used by far so let's go ahead here and we will look at some of the games now I got some you know lower games here like Sonic Dash, Subway Surfer, uh, Asphalt Nitro then I'm going to try a bigger game out and all like that so just kind of give you an idea of the performance so let's go ahead and just go into Sonic Dash here like I said the screen is pretty vibrant I mean it looks really good and I was really kind of surprised you know how good a 720p display you know looks on a 6 inch display so yeah Let's go ahead and get playing here a little bit. So it may have a few little hiccups here and there. And sometimes the screen is not the most responsive that I've ever seen on a device. But overall it does seem to do you know, okay. So we'll play here for just a minute and we'll see what happens here. I'm not really much on playing mobile games to be honest with you.
But overall, the experience seems to be pretty good on these low-end games. Let's go back home. We'll go into Asphalt Nitro. So I'll get this phone here, or I'll get this game here set up, and uh, we'll come back shortly. So we're loaded up now on this game, and uh, it don't look too awful bad. It has a few little drop frames here and there, but really nothing that's, you know, going to really get on your nerves. So we'll just play here for a little bit, and overall, like I said, gameplay is fairly decent. I mean, it's not bad. It's not like a really terrible experience, nothing like that. It does, it does work. And the, and the viewing angles really don't look bad either. It might look kind of bad on this um, on this camera screen. But overall, it does a pretty good job. I mean, not really much in the way of drop frame. Just maybe here and there you might see a couple. So like I said, overall, gameplay is decent. Goes right back home. Not much of an issue there. Now, I do want to say that this phone here is huge, okay? Uh, the bezels are very big on the top and the bottom of this device. And unless you've got really big hands, this phone here is not going to be something that you're going to want to hold for a long period of time, especially if you have this case on the back of it. This thing right here just makes it that much more bulky. And it's just, you know, I mean, the phone's not very heavy. I mean, it's, I, felt, I felt lighter phones. <laughs> I mean... You can hear it there. It kind of sounds, you know, pretty solid. Now, I want to get to the rear speaker. Now, the rear speaker is a huge disappointment on this device. If you want to actually hear your phone, uh, this one here may not be what you're looking for. Uh, sometimes um, it sounds hollow. There's times where I've played a video on YouTube and it just distorts really bad. And I've used speakerphone when I had it hooked to Freedom Pop a while back. And it just, the speakerphone quality was horrible. So this rear speaker here is not hitting on a whole lot. It's very poor and very poor quality. So yeah, if you like good sound quality, this phone does not provide it. Now, it does have an 8 megapixel camera on the rear with a flash and a 5 megapixel on the front. And we'll just take a quick look here at some of the camera settings. Um... Honestly, I've not really taken very many pictures outside in good lighting with this camera. I have taken video outside in good lighting, and the video quality is horrible. Uh, one of the worst I've seen on a phone in a long time. So we'll go into camera right now, just for a little bit. And, I mean, it has a number of effects here. you got your panorama mode right there. You have your face beauty mode right there and back to normal. Got HDR mode as well. You can do not remove device during HDR capture. So we'll go back out of that. We'll try anyway. Got your flash here. And this right here goes to your front facing camera. Got your picture and video right here. And of course here is your settings. So you got exposure. Uh, you can change your exposure. Uh, to dark, to bright, to whatever. You got color effects, you got none, mono, sepia, negative, and aqua. Scene mode, you got auto, night, sunset, party, portrait. I hit the wrong button. Portrait, landscape, night portrait, theater, beach, snow, steady photo, fireworks, sports, and candle lit. Uh, with all these, you know, with all this stuff in, the, in this camera, you'd think you'd have a really awesome camera. Now, I don't want to judge the actual picture quality, and I will have some picture and video test in another video showing you how this camera actually does look. Now, in good lighting, the camera may, as far as pictures go, may be very, you know, awesome. I don't know. Um, I know in low light, it's pretty shoddy. Uh, video quality in good light was very, it was like 10 frames a second. It was just very pathetic, I mean, honestly. With all these settings here, you would think that it would, you know, have a really awesome camera but that ain't the case here uh, you can also by here by image properties you can push that and you can adjust sharpness hue saturation brightness contrast all that stuff anti-flicker and restore defaults now in the camera you got voice capture you got face detection smile shot auto scene detection a self timer of 2 and 10 seconds capture number is 5 or 10 
picture size is 8 megapixels and it goes down from there to 5 megapixels, 3 megapixels, 2, 1.3, and 1 megapixel, and also VGA. You can also um, preview in full screen or standard 4x3 in ISO. You can change that to whatever you want to change it to. So we'll go over here now to the video. You got electronic image stabilization, which is not very good as well. Microphone on or off. Audio mode is normal or meeting. You got time lapse interval of one second, 1 2, 2 and a half, 3, 5, and 10 seconds. And video quality does, does not even show you the resolution. It says low, medium, high, and fine. Fine is 1480, high is 720p. And I'm not really sure what the medium and low is. <laughs> so there we go with that. Now we'll switch around here to the front facing camera. And the front facing camera on this phone is bad. It's just bad, bad, bad. Um, you know, I'm not really sure how it being good lighting outside, but indoors, it's just not the greatest at all. So up here, you got your beauty mode, of course. We'll go here to the settings, and you it's basically the same thing. Got exposure, color effect there. Um, you got scene mode, white balance, in, uh, image properties, same thing going on there. Uh, vo voice capture, face detection, pretty much the same thing there as well. Picture size is 5 megapixel, 3 megapixel, 2, 1.3, 1, and BGA. Preview size, ISO, volume keys. You can push the volume key to take a picture, just like having a dedicated camera key. So that's really nice as well. Now over here, got electronic image stabilization as well on the front. A microphone, audio mode, you got time lapse as well. And video quality is the same here at low, medium, high, and fine. So there you go. So I will take some pictures and video with this device. And I will you know, show you the quality that I get from this camera. So hopefully the camera on this is really good to make up for the horrible video experience. So yeah. Let's go ahead and play um, this uh Let's see what we got here. Got Modern Combat 5. Now we all know this is a very graphic intense game. I'll get this here set up and I'll come back in just a second. Okay, so we're actually on the game now. And uh, of course we can't really tell until we actually get into the game. So, so far it does seem to be smooth. Uh, normally, uh, however, a lot of times this right here gets stuck. Not really sure why, but it just gets stuck. Now I was having a better experience experience with this game a little bit earlier but right now it's kind of you know acting up a little bit and I apologize if I'm out of frame because it's kind of hard to do this here looking through the camera screen and all that kind of stuff so whenever I drag up here uh, it's, it just stops sometimes but as you see uh, overall it seems to be halfway decently smooth but whenever you are walking and turn it just like it just stops sometimes I'm sorry I'm out of frame y'all apologize for that uh, but it just stops working sometimes. I mean, you can be sitting there and playing the game, and you're walking, and it just stops. So that didn't work. See, it's just not. It's just not always the most responsive screen on a phone that I've ever seen. That's also something they're taking into account. So we'll walk again, and I'll kind of show you what I mean here. Uh, scrolling around seems to be okay, as you see right there. Uh, but walking, sometimes it just it just stops. Right now, it's just stopped. So it's a mixed experience, okay? I mean, the game seems to play okay, but it does have its issues. It does have its problems. Now... The drop down up here, I know this is a very scattered review, y'all. I mean, I don't have any notes wrote down. I pretty much just, whenever I something pops in my head to do, that's whenever I, you know, make mention of it. There is not much customization to the drop down. You can't edit anything. There's nowhere to edit nothing. So what you see right here is all you get here in the drop down. So you know, there you go. Go into the settings here for a little bit. You got SIM cards. This is a dual SIM phone. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage. You got display, which you got mirror vision, which you can display picture quality. Optimization. I see what that is. Um, it, okay, mirror vision is a set of engines to enhance display picture quality. This interference, this interface allows for interactive tuning with real-time quality feedback, making it easy and straightforward to users to tailor the picture 
quality based on their needs. Advanced users can choose picture mode, user mode to activate more tuning options. So that's something different there. I've not really seen before, but you know, it may have been around for a while. Who really knows? Uh, brightness level, wallpaper, sleep, daydream. Uh, you can cast your screen as well. Uh, back out of here, got sound notification. You got smart wake, smart wake, which um, you can let's turn it on. You can paint C to open phone app. You can paint an E to unlock screen, M to music, and an O to SOS and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool as well. You know, something you know added. Pretty cool apps, storage and USB. So far, the apps I got downloaded on the phone. Uh, with some pretty big apps for games, stuff like that. I got 5.5 gigabytes used. And honestly, it's awesome not to have, you know, the system on here showing, you know, that eight of that's already gone. So that's pretty awesome as well. Battery. Uh, battery is hit and miss with this thing. Uh, it does get warm when you're doing a lot of things with it. However, the battery is hitting me. There's times it'll hold a charge. There's times it will not hold a charge. I'm not sure if mine's a defective battery in mine or what, but I do know that sometimes the battery life is just not the greatest. There will not be a battery test with this device since I have nothing really to use it with right now. So, of course, there we go. Memory, got one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, as you see, I mean, the phone seemed to work pretty well. I mean, even on high intense games, there wasn't many, you know, freezing moments. It just was not wanting to, you know, really react, you know, very well. But it did seem to work okay. And for something with, with, something with that lower RAM, you know, it works pretty good. Got security locations accounts. This phone does not have a fingerprint sensor, nothing like that. It's just pretty much your standard phone. And it does run 6.0. Uh, marshmallow now the funny thing here is normally whenever you push this button right here you got recent apps not the case with this phone you push this phone right here it takes you into wallpapers and widgets okay to get to your um, recent you got to hold down on the home button and there are all your recent buttons so that could be a little something to get used to right there because um, this button right here always resembles you know there you go recent apps and it's not that so you know, there you go. I mean, you got your phone dialer here as well. I mean, standard stuff. I mean, you're, I mean the keyboard is just your standard G board and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I think this has a front face and flash, but I'm not really sure. Let's go into the camera one more time just to see if this is a front face and flash because I cannot remember if it is or not. And so, yes, it does have a front face and flash. Yeah, there you go right there. So it does have a front facing flash <laughs> so you know um call quality seems to be seemed to be pretty decent on this phone uh you know i use it on freedom pop and everything and call quality seemed to be okay and everything else um is this phone recommended honestly to me it's a huge phone it's very big very big bezels um the camera is you know so far from what i've seen is not the greatest in the world it does not have lte support um, it's got one gigabyte, one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, it's got a MediaTek processor, and you know, but it does seem to work okay. I mean, I have used it, and it seems to work pretty good. The screen looks really good for 720p, and so there's really no complaints there. I mean, unless you're just really picky about screen, you know, resolution, this looks pretty good. Would I buy this phone? Uh, maybe for like media, you know, uh, but however, I would not rely on this rear speaker. Because this rear speaker here is not good. If you want something with really good picture taking qualities, video qualities, this thing can be the phone for you as well. So I know this was kind of a long review, but I kind of want to just give you some of the basics here on the on this phone here. Uh, very big bezels. When you put it back into its case here, it just gets that much bigger. And unless you've got really huge hands, you are not going to want to hold this phone very long. So. This is just my review here of the Cell Allure uh, Miracle 6.0S. If this was helpful and informative in any way, hit that like button. Any questions you may have, please leave it in the comment section below, and I'll get back with you as soon as possible to try to answer your questions. And subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell for um, notifications, live streams, new posts, all that stuff. That'd be awesome. Y'all have a good one, and we'll see y'all in the next video.